Hi, I'm Jesse. I'm going to give you this introduction to what the Taiwan special is all about and what you can expect and where it came from. I had been in Taiwan nine years. I was well over halfway in my 10th year. And throughout the month of August, several things began to snap. I went to the U.S. government and tried to give them some suggestions on, you know, what relations in, you know, with Taiwan could be. And the U.S. government always listens, but they didn't accept videos. So I said, well, why give them my videos? I'll give my videos to the world. So it's like sometimes the only way people will expect, accept something, it's like they expect that they only accept it through the bullhorn. They, they don't want to receive a quiet reminder, you know, respectfully. People don't want to get told quietly, individually, privately, this is something that you can do to improve yourself. Here's a good idea. No, no, no. They, they, they want you to do what Trump does on Twitter or they won't listen at all. And it's a sad, unfortunate uh, fact I've had to come realize. I, I've gone to the U.S. government with the things that you'll hear about in the Taiwan special. And they said, sorry, we don't take videos. So uh, I'm putting those videos here for you. And that's essentially what this is about. Now, I had been trying the approach in Taiwan of being friendly, and, and I have a channel, From Asia With Love. You can go to fromasiawithlove.net, and that's where I talk about Taiwan's culture and the, 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 the fun, amazing, wild, wow, isn't that incredible stuff that happens in Asia. I mean, you, you could have a TV series. I've written journals of the crazy coincidences that happen. I, I have a friend I meet over at this building. I know him and then randomly I go to McDonald's right next to my house and there he is across town to the McDonald's he's never been at before or since. And we see, you know, just that is just my normal life and crazy weird things happen and it's fun and it's endearing and it makes you fall in love with Taiwan to read about it. So I've got those at fromasiawithlove.net and there's a YouTube channel with that. And it's fun Taiwan culture, you know, what the food is like, what the people are like. But being happy and talking about daisies and flowers or orchids, since we're in Asia, if you know anything about flowers in Asia and the logos on their flags, it, it, it doesn't, it's not the only thing that we need in the world. It's not the only thing that people want. I mean, it's fun to look at fun culture. But we want to know how we can make our own lives better. We want to know, you know, like Morpheus, you know, something is wrong with the world. How do we make it better? You know, people want to, want to get to the meat. And this happy, happy, only talk about happy, smiley, it's not what you say, it's how you say it, rot gut, comes from people that aren't happy. You know, sometimes you need to complain as at specifically in the times when there's something to complain about, like a problem that's preventing progress and preventing love and happiness. And when we have obstacles in our way as we pursue growth and self-improvement and inner joy and being kind and fair to other people, when we encounter obstacles to those good things on that good path, it's absolutely time to say that the obstacle's there and to say why it is. But when you do that, you're going to get, well, let's talk about something positive. You're going to get that off-topic response from people that actually are very angry and they don't know how to make a critique in a positive way because they're angry and if you point out a problem, they only hear hatred, even though you don't mean hatred and what you're talking about is purely good. Hey, let's, let's move this rock out of the way so that cars don't hit it. Let's move this, this 10 pound cement block out of the middle of the freeway so someone doesn't die. How dare you criticize? And it's, it's like there's no level at which they'll accept criticism. And those are angry, truly angry people. And... I decided to stop taking my P's and Q's from them. So in the Taiwan special, I call out the problems and I call out uh, the shots as I see them. And having lived in Taiwan, I decided that showing pictures of the flowers and the rivers and the pretty culture wasn't the only thing. That I need to also talk about 
what the indications of the problems are in the world. And it's all from an international perspective. I lived in Taiwan. I was in my 10th year when all this started to click. And I was also getting some books published. And when, you know, once you've got some books published in many senses, you're bulletproof. You know, I was always worried about people arguing with me and saying, how dare you come to this country and then talk about, you know, whatever and talk about the problems in Vietnam and the problems in, you know, Taiwan and the problems in Asia. How, how dare you talk about that? Well, if, if I've written a book or 10 or 17 or 18 or 20, then I guess I'm bulletproof. So several things began to happen in August of my 10th year in Asia. And I just said, I don't care anymore. I, I'm going to point out the problems where they are because we need to know. America needs to see the problems in other countries so that we can see the problems in our own country. America needs to know how they can encourage those other countries, our friends in Asia, how they can be better. America needs its friends to be better. Every, you need your friends to be better and your friends need you to be better. Our friends in Asia need America to be better. We all need to become better. And while Trump is making America great again, you know, that's the, the thing of the times, right? Well, I think our friends in Asia need to become great. They never have known greatness. They have what I call a third world legal system. And there's a video on YouTube where I show some of the roads in Taiwan. Taiwan's a good country and it's first world in many ways, but the roads really show what's going on everywhere in, in government. It's, I mean, if, if a government doesn't know what's going on, you're going to see it on the roads. The roads are not necessarily the most important thing, or maybe they are. I mean, Mussolini was terrible, but he was popular because he made the trains run on time. So transportation is an issue. And it's also an indication of what's going on in the rest of government, how the roads are, are you know, are, are they smart? Are, are they rigorously enforcing stupid laws? D does the law outlaw what's normal? You know, do, do we just put up a stop sign and red and green light every time there's a car accident someplace? Or do we maybe think we should train drivers to obey yield signs? You know, how does government govern the roads? However they do that is going to show how they're doing everything else. And if we can fix road governance, then we're going to clean up society and government as far as how to be a lawful society, which includes making laws that are smart, the right laws. Don't just make bad laws and expect people to obey them. I mean, a government that makes a bad law and then enforces it makes criminals, but it's not the people that are the criminals. It's the government that made those laws that define society as being criminal just by ex virtue of existing. We have to have, this is, there's a whole philosophy that you can get into about laws, but in that Taiwan video, I use roads as a very good example of what I call the third world legal system. And it goes, it, it happens in every country. Even in America, there are places where our legal system is kind of third world legal system, such as on immigration. And what I found living in Asia is that none of those issues in, you know, that, that, that's, that are wrong with the immigration system in America, none of the real problems are debated. In, in, in the left-wing, right-wing debate about what to do with immigration, no one's talking about the real problems with immigration. They're talking about their agendas. We should love people. Mm -hmm. Yep, so we should make good laws for them. No, we should, walls are bad. Well, do you have walls on your house? You know, you know it's, and then, you know, a wall isn't the end-all solution to everything. I mean, you know, people are going to find a way to go around it, but a wall is a smart idea. Just because people can go around a wall doesn't mean a wall is stupid. As the wall of China got built, my understanding is that the villages at the edge of the wall, the wall stopped, they would get raided. So they had to keep building the wall longer and longer, just pushing the problem farther and farther out of the way. The Great Wall of China has an interesting and controversial history of itself. It wasn't necessarily purely wonderful as every leader of every nation wants to think that all their works were. So it, well, China is a great and amazing thing. It is great for and on many levels, but it wasn't without its controversy. So was it a good idea? I think so. I think the, the wall of China was a very good idea. And I think the wall between the US and Mexico 
with its big, beautiful doors, has already proven to be a good idea. Let the facts, let the facts speak. Let, let them speak. It's a wall with big, beautiful doors. And we need to know how to make immigration work correctly. And no one's debating the real issues. Well, you're going to explore those issues with the Taiwan special. So I'm not coming from Taiwan. I'm someone who was in Taiwan in his 10th year, well over half, late into my 10th year, when I decided to start this. So wherever I am in the world, I'm giving you this from my own perspective. Now, at times I'm going to do symposiums. I'm going to call them a symposium edition where I'm going to interview someone and we're going to talk. And I'm going to try not to talk, but I'm expecting that you've, you've watched this. So this is kind of a prerequisite. I'm also doing another video that's going to talk about uh, coming to conclusions and uh, kind of Socratic method, so the Socratic teaching, te teaching method versus, um, you know, just telling someone what your conclusion is and, and, you know, getting to the point, like, this is my conclusion and, and this is what I think. And then we'll fill in the blanks or ask questions if we have them. That's very different from Socrates. I've got another video that talks about that and then how I've encountered that in Asia, which is also interesting, but also prerequisite if you want to understand the Taiwan special, it's that you've seen that video with the cars in Taiwan and you understand what I mean when I talk about a third world legal system. Again, the roads are an indication. They're, 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 we see what's going on and we can make a big difference. Uh, but, but the problem, it goes everywhere and it's not just Taiwan. In many other places, it's much, much worse. And we always have our own third world legal systems, even in our own countries, even in our own households. The, 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 the rules, the governance, the leadership from parents and children can be like a third world legal system on many different levels. So this series was started when I finally decided to stop keeping these concerns in and then putting on a smiley face and taking pictures of flowers and, and mountains. And I decided I need to talk about the, the elephants in the living room and the problems lingering below the surface. And this is not out of any hatred for anyone. This is because we love everyone. I mean, I choose to stay in Asia as much as I can because I love it. But I originally came to Asia, not because I hated America, but because I loved America. But I know that America needs to understand other countries. We are a nation of immigrants. We come from many different cultures, but we don't understand other countries. We just, we don't understand them. It's, it's not about partisan politics or if it's the left wing or right wing predefined script as to how we should handle things. We just don't know what's going on. And this Taiwan special series aims to clear that up.